Good morning, everyone. Your morning weather briefing for this June 20th finds that there are no changes in the forecast versus what I presented back on Tuesday. Looking at temperature and rainfall outlooks this morning, you can see that my 6 to 10 day temperature forecast has warmed up a little bit versus what I presented yesterday. I would consider that more of a factor of just the progression of time rather than any changes to a warmer look in the actual models today. Uh, 6 to 10 day uh, rainfall outlook still featuring a lot of uh, uh, rainfall in that time frame. Most of that rainfall though probably during the first half of that period, but there would still be some rainfall chances even in the 11 to 15 day time frame. QPF discussion this morning, once again, I'm not going to be making any big disagreements versus uh, what is shown here. Additional big amounts of rainfall are going to be seen across a big portion of the nation's midsection. Uh, probably a good part of the rain that is uh, presented on this map is going to be during the next one to two days, but clearly even Friday and the weekend will be far from dry across the middle of the country. For the day six to seven time frame, not going to have any disagreements with this map either. Some nice agreement this morning between the GFS and European models on another significant rainfall event uh, hitting the Corn Belt for especially the Monday Tuesday time frame of next week. Afternoon high temperatures yesterday, we continue to see the uh, recent heat wave be paired back across a, a big portion of the Corn Belt. Note that we had uh, high temperatures yesterday in uh, clouds and rainfall that only uh, managed to reach the 60s yesterday across northern portions of the region, although notice in uh, southern portions of the Corn Belt that we did still see uh, a lot of high temperatures in the 90s. Uh, going to be seeing that heat continue to be paired back for this Wednesday before even milder temperatures start to arrive for tomorrow. Extensive rainfall across uh, the Corn Belt and across northern portions of the Hardbread Winter Wheat Belt uh, during the last 24 hours. A uh, number of places there seeing one inch rainfall amounts, even some localized two or even three plus inch rainfall amounts. Looking at radar estimated rainfall since 7 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, you can see that uh, scattered rains of more than an inch uh, covered a good portion of the Corn Belt during that time frame, although clearly uh, the biggest, uh, most extensive, and heaviest rains impacted the far western Corn Belt and a sizable portion of the Harbor Winter Wheat Belt. Uh, note that there was uh, fairly decent areas uh, in that area, seeing uh, rainfall amounts of 2.5 to 4 inches, even some localized 4 plus inch amounts for a small portion right along the Nebraska and Kansas border. Taking a look at 14-day rainfall totals uh, for the past two weeks, you can see that uh, only very small portions of the Corn Belt are to a point now where we haven't seen at least uh, some two and a half to four in uh, four inch rainfall amounts uh, during the last two week time frame. Uh, area of the Corn Belt that really still would need rainfall right now, certainly you're still looking at sections of eastern, southeastern Missouri and into southwestern Illinois, uh, probably some sections of uh, eastern Kansas as well, still lacking in some rainfall, but uh, clearly a big portion of the Corn Belt has seen extensive and even heavy rainfall amounts uh, during the last two weeks. Areas that still need rainfall clearly have a lot of rainfall chances in the forecast for the next seven to eight days as well. Looking at the radar this morning. Uh, extensive rainfall activity still occurring across a, a big portion of the Plain States this morning and also in uh, some scattered areas of the Corn Belt. You can start to see a little bit of a rotation uh, in the rainfall activity in the Plain States right now, indicative of the upper level low pressure system that is located in that area right now. As far as the forecast is concerned, it is a combination of that upper level low pressure system that I just mentioned and a stationary front on the Corn Belt that is going to be bringing the Corn Belt some additional uh, widespread and significant even heavy rainfall amounts in both the near term and even for early next week as well. Uh, looking at surface features as of 1 o'clock this morning, you can see that stationary frontal boundary is still a very dominant feature in the heart of the Corn Belt right now. And again, it is going to be that stationary front combined with a very strong upper level low pressure system that is going to be bringing the Corn Belt additional uh, big rains in the near term. Uh, here is the look of that uh, upper level trough of low pressure, very significant, especially for this time of year as it appears on the European model as of 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, with that uh, scenario in mind, we are still looking at uh, the potential of some heavy rainfall amounts during the next couple of days. Uh, note that especially northwestern Iowa is going to be a real target area for some big rainfall amounts during the next 24 hours. That is a point of very, very good model agreement this morning, and we do have some flash flood watches in effect uh, for northwestern Iowa and nearby areas because of that situation. So uh, very high confidence right now that we are going to be seeing some heavy amounts of rainfall, probably on the order of 
four to six inches, even uh, locally heavier than that in northwestern Iowa and nearby areas. So expect to see some flooding issues uh, in that area with the rains that are going to be seen during the next 24 hours. Uh, then as we work towards tomorrow, the bigger rain is going to be shifted more towards the eastern portion of the Corn Belt. Again, that won't be the end of the rainfall chances. Uh, maybe the rainfall amounts and coverage decreasing as we work towards uh, Friday and a big portion of the weekend. But rains will be picking up again for uh, very late in the weekend period through the early portion of next week. And that is all due to the fact that we're still going to be seeing some semblance of a uh, stationary front in the Corn Belt at that time. But more importantly, we are once again going to be seeing a significant upper level trough of low pressure moving eastward across the Corn Belt during that same time frame. So uh, maybe a brief break in uh, rainfall amounts and coverage for Friday and into a decent portion of the weekend. But rainfall amounts really picking up again in the Corn Belt by late in the day on Sunday through the early portion of next week. So if we combine the near term threat of rainfall and the threat of rainfall for the early portion of next week, you can see uh, rainfall amounts in the forecast for the next eight days for today through next Wednesday. And you can see that all of the models are in agreement of uh, extensive, uh, significant, and locally heavy amounts of rainfall uh, during the next eight day time frame. You can make a case that uh, basically anyone in the Corn Belt in that time frame is going to be looking at rainfall amounts of at least a couple of inches. A lot of the Corn Belt seeing more than four inches of rainfall in places that are just uh, rather unlucky, uh, probably seeing flooding type rainfall amounts, certainly more than they want, probably some localized amounts on the order of four to six inches and even heavier than that. And again, wanting to emphasize that northwestern Iowa would certainly be a target area for some of that bigger rains just over the next 24 hours. Still looking at more pairing back of heat in the near term. A relatively warm condition still going to be seen for this Wednesday in southeastern sections of the Corn Belt. But uh, the western Corn Belt will really turn a lot cooler today. And then the entire Corn Belt is looking at uh, quite uh, mild conditions or even cool conditions for tomorrow through the early portion of next week. Looking at temperature anomalies for Friday, you can see that below normal temperatures covering most of the Corn Belt at that time. Even some much below normal readings in the far western Corn Belt and into the Plain States where readings will run 10 to 15 degrees degrees below normal. Again, that cool weather lasting through early portion of next week. Before, but before we get to the end of the 6 to 10 day time frame, uh, temperatures will be warming once again. Temperature anomalies as we get towards June 27th. You can note that uh, readings are above normal once again across most of the nation by that time. And that is warmth that is going to continue right through the end of the 11 to 15 day period. Looking at 500 millibars for the 4th of July, you can see that above normal heights are being seen across basically all of the country by that time. It would clearly be a weather pattern that would feature above or even maybe some localized much above normal temperatures across a big portion of the nation. I would think that that's a weather pattern at that time uh, that would favor uh, plenty of 90 plus degree high temperatures across a sizable portion of the Corn Belt, but especially uh, more likely towards central and eastern portions of the region. So uh, some uh, mild temperatures in the near term, but clearly as we get towards June 27th, a return to above normal temperatures in the Corn Belt, and clearly the weather pattern would be featuring easily above normal temperatures then for the rest of the two-week time frame. Would it be a situation where the rainfall chances would be shut off? I still would have some uh, rather strong doubts about that. You can see on the European model that any sort of a dome of high pressure would be more towards a uh, southern portion of the nation. Even the GFS ensemble appears to have uh, backed off to some degree on its uh, a dome of high pressure this morning, uh, indicating that uh, more of a jet stream flow, more of a northwesterly flow across the Corn Belt. So certainly a situation uh, the second week of the two-week time frame would not be nearly as wet as the first week, uh, given the warmer weather pattern that we be, we would be seeing during the week two time frame. But again, I do not see it as a situation where the rainfall chances would be shutting off. I think that there would still be enough of a northwest flow aloft, enough of a ring of fire situation to keep rainfall chances in the forecast for the Corn Belt for even the week two time frame. Internationally, this morning, still extensive below normal rainfall expected in Europe during the next two weeks. Any above normal amounts, mainly in Romania, uh, South southward into a uh former uh, portions of the former Yugoslavia. Uh, France in particular looking quite dry, still a very limited range. A lot of France uh, seeing nothing at all for at least the next 10 days. Uh, no changes in the forecast for the summer row crop areas of the western former Soviet Union. A below number rainfall for a lot of that area for the next two weeks. Any decent rains in western Ukraine and areas to the north of there. Uh, looking at above normal temperatures for a lot of the same area looking at below normal rainfall for the next two weeks as well. Uh, spring wheat areas of the former 
former Soviet Union, still looking at extensive uh, rainfall during the uh, next uh, 10 days or even longer than that. Uh, still relatively cool temperatures, not as cool though as it has been in recent weeks. Still a wet forecast for all of the corn and soybean areas of Manchuria during the next two weeks. Uh, Manchurian corn and soybean areas, you can see there, normal to above normal rainfall during that time frame. That rainfall spread out quite nicely throughout the two-week time frame. Note that extensive above normal rainfall across the North China Plain during the next two weeks, all that rainfall in southern portion of the North China Plain through the weekend, then the northern portion of the North China Plain looking at extensive and significant or even heavy rainfall for the 6 to 10 and 11 to 15 day periods. For the Canadian prairies, dry conditions all across the Canadian prairies for the rest of this work week, then some rains will be returning for the weekend and through the 6 to 10 day time frame. Fairly decent rain is going to be seen across Saskatchewan and Alberta, but note that a lot of that rain is going to be missing most of the wheat areas of Manitoba. In Australia, strictly below normal rainfall there for the next two weeks. Still a very uh, bad situation for the Australian uh, wheat areas that clearly need some uh, bigger rains, but it is just certainly not in the forecast at this time. A lot of their eastern growing areas seeing nothing in the way of rainfall for at least the next 10 days. Uh, any rainfall that is seen in the western wheat areas of Australia, mainly during the 6 to 10 day time frame, and even then would be very meager in nature. Finally, for this morning in India, the monsoon will be reviving itself to some degree over the next two weeks. Certainly not the strongest that I've ever seen for this time of year, but enough where we are looking at normal to perhaps a bit above normal rainfall across most of the Indian subcontinent for the next two weeks. That's what I have for your Wednesday. Everyone have themselves a great day.